this is a uh, an introductory class and a training workshop on uh, GIS for construction professionals. Um, when I mean construction professional, if you are uh, in construction industry, uh, as far as you do anything that has to do with the environment, you are you need the GIS knowledge. Okay, so without wasting much of our time. Uh, we'll talk about this uh, this particular workshop. There are some guidelines, there are some rules that we have to follow to make sure that we achieve our aim because um, it, it's something that you pay for. So you have to actually uh, get value for what you pay for. And then one of the things that we need to follow to make us achieve that is, um, is that we each of us, as I said from the beginning, you have to install the software in your system, which is one of the major requirements. And then please, before we continue, uh, you can mute yourself back. You can mute yourself so that you will not uh, interrupt the process. Okay, so that your background noise will not interrupt the process, please. And then um, at the end of every training, every section, let's ask uh, at the end of today's uh, class, um, we are, I'm going to send you the video of what you have done today, that is for this workshop, I'll send you the video, and then possibly in case of um, any challenges, you can go back to the video and watch, so that you can be able to do your assignment or you can be able to do your activities, because at the end of every class, there must be an activity, there must be a task given to you that you are going to do. Because it's a practical training section, I'm now here to actually do teach, teach you construction, uh, management or any theory course. I'm trying, I'm here to actually show you how you can use this particular technology, which is GIS, to actually uh, carry out your construction process. And the process involves uh, management of construction sites, also involves uh, possibly logistics management, and also involves uh, planning of your project site. Okay, so these are some of the things that we, we are going to considered. Then um, one thing I want us to also note is that uh, we are going to divide this training into different sections, please, uh, because um, we are using uh, a Zoom. And then based on the fact that we are using a free version of Zoom, because we are trying to subscribe to it, but these uh, dollar exchange things, we are unable to make payment because the transaction was not going. So we are using a free version of Zoom, which it, it, it ends every session by 40 minutes. So we are going to do session by 40 minutes. At the end of 40 minutes, we will take a break of 10 minutes and then we'll join back again and then we'll do another section. So we do 40, 40 minutes section. After the 40 minutes section, you take 10 minutes break, you can relax yourself and then come back after 10 minutes, join immediately after 10 minutes as we continue. Okay, so... Um, for the side of introduction, um, then another thing again, I'll talk about the 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 project. As I said, at the end of each um, class, we are going to give you an assignment or a project that you are going to do, and then from uh, our uh, message that we have been sending to you, it is clearly stated that you are going to get a certificate at the end of the workshop. But the certificate will not just be given to you, except you actually do all the assignments that is given to you, okay? All the assignments, and then at the end, you do your final projects, which are going to be given to you at the end of this training. So if you can be able to do that, you are, you are you'll be getting your certificate at the end of this workshop. So please, I want all of you to actually put your attention as much as you could so that you can be able to you know, follow up everything, and then you get your certificate at the end of the training. So I hope uh, that uh, uh, it's, it's clear enough for everybody so that um, at the end of the training, you will not feel that, okay, you do a training, and then we say there's going to be a certificate and you do not get your certificate. Certificate is readily available for anybody that can be able to finish his project. It's not about making payments. Because if you just give your certificate based on the fact that you make a payment and you don't know the GIS, and then we have a certificate from us that you have 
a GIS training from us and you cannot defend it, that will not actually say well about us as, a, as an organization. So you have to actually dedicate your time and seriousness to do every assignment, every project. If you have any challenge, you can ask in a group so that anybody that has a good idea about it can explain that is the reason of that particular group so that you can interact with yourself in terms of doing assignments and all that. Okay, um, now I'm going to share a screen so that I can introduce the course now. If you look at our course contents, we need to do introduction. So I'll be sharing screen now. Okay. Um, this is introduction to GIS for construction professional. Okay. Uh, we talk about what is GIS. We have been measuring all these GIS and GIS, GIS in our messages and all that. Although we we earlier we have a, a workshop uh before uh, we have a webinar before this workshop uh if you are if you attend our webinar you actually you know see this slide and all that so gis is a computer system capable of assembling storing manipulating and analyzing displaying geographic reference information okay gis stands for geographic information system and it combines data technology software and gps to aid analysis and display of spatial reference data. Now, the main reason why, as a construction professional, we need to put into consideration this GIS is because um, we deal with locations, okay? If you want to build a house, you want to do uh, carry out any construction, either road designs, either road construction, house, or any kind of uh, uh, environmental design and construction that you are into, you actually need to know the location at which you want to do that construction, right? Now, the field of engineering and environmental has come a long way. One type of technology that made the modern engineers is geographic information system because it makes all the work easy for us. You can actually sit down in your house, the comfort of your home, and assess data, environmental data somewhere else without necessarily taking risk to go to that place, okay? GIS can be used for, by engineer to collect and analyze geographic data. The data can then be displayed in a layer visualization using a digital geographic map. Now, when it comes to the issue of GIS, the final output of every GIS data is map. Okay, and then as a construction professional, we are actually not uh, uh, interested or our concern are not much in map making. Okay, you are not here to actually learn how to make map. But you are here to actually use those data that you can you have to generate before making the map. You can as well advance your knowledge by going into more of um, a map uh, map making as well because it's a very simple thing using the GIS. Okay, it's a very simple thing using the GIS. So, okay, sorry, I'm I'm accepting some participants. Okay, so it's a very simple thing using the GIS. So um, one of the one of the things that we need to consider is ability for us to actually use those location data that we have to to take decision in terms of our own construction decisions. Okay, now GIS, geographic information system software analysis, save, manipulate geographic data so that it may be viewed in a context with other data. Okay, now we talk about in building industry or in construction industry, we talk about building information modeling. Okay, so now when we talk about combining the GIS data with other data now, we can now combine a GIS data, which is geographic information system data, with building information modeling. Okay, or building information data. If you are into construction and you are current about what is going on in technology, you know that, okay, there's something they call BIM, Building Information Modeling, that is gathering information about a particular building, okay? So now, is that information that is our concern? Given the geographic information, that is what we have, we considered, okay? The information in the geographic world, in the, in the, in the, in the every location, in the geolocation, in the environment, that is what our concern is all about. Okay, so it may be utilized in varieties of businesses to collect information ranging from environmental data to logistics. 
For example, if you are doing construction work, you can be able to gather enough logistics management because you are you are doing the location from anywhere you are. So you can possibly know which particular route that you can follow, even from the comfort of your home before you even go to the site. Okay. So all right. Now, uh, before we continue, I'll just talk a little about uh, me and the organization. Uh, my name is Agbo Uh That is your, I'll be your, be your instructor for this um, particular workshop. Uh, I'm a team lead at Cast Pressure Technology. Uh, I'm also a member of NIOB uh, and also a member of uh, NCA, that is the uh, Nigeria Cartographic Association and uh, also a member of the Information Society of Nigeria. Okay, just saying. And then I'm a CAD and GIS consultant to Cardinal State Governments presently. And uh, who are we as a CAD structure technology? The organization that have been disturbing you with uh, messages for this um, uh, GIS training. Who are we? We are CAD and GIS technicians, a group of experts um, gathered together to actually bring out this knowledge of CAD. Because we know, we discover that um, construction professionals, we actually know much in uh, in terms of uh, GIS, we are focusing more on CAD. But now, if you are using CAD, if you can be able to combine your, your CAD knowledge with the GIS knowledge, you can be able to deliver a perfect and easy work for yourself, okay? Now, we serve as a consultant to various engineering departments. Okay, we help in producing some uh, management approach, uh, GIS and any other uh, consultancy services that we enter to different organizations. And then we help people in research. Maybe at the end of this um, uh, workshop, we discover that possibly you are running your postgraduate uh, program and then you want to run a research in the process of integrating the uh, CAD and GIS. We can help you in pro pro uh, providing some data for you, okay? So we produce uh, provide data for research, and then we also we help you in getting some necessary information for you in terms of your research. And then we teach, uh, we organize classes uh, both online and on site. Our training center is in Cardinal and Plateau States. Uh, we organize um, uh, training for uh, professionals in, uh, in constructions and environmental industries. We we also uh, organize training for organizations, okay, corporate organizations. You can invite us for your organization. If you have a good number of people in your organizations and then you feel any of our courses is of interest to you, you can invite us to actually train organizations in that particular technology. So, so we train in both uh, CAD and GIS, okay? Um, presently, as I said, I'm a consultant with Cardinal State, uh, uh, with Cardinal State governments on land administration process. That is one of the ministry that we run the GIS technology there, land administration and land titling. And what do we do there? Now, we tend to uh, digitalize Cardinal State Ministry of Land, okay? You know, you quite understand that, okay, the old Ministry of Land that we have, they actually do all their land allocations, uh, titling, everything manually using the old files. For example, when we came to Kajis, you see a lot of files. In fact, if you go to their archive, you see plenty of files there. Okay, that will be, there are some, there are some files that, in fact, you'll be seeing 1970 something, 1960 something. Okay, when it was even, uh, Northern Nigeria, it's not even Cardinal State. Okay. So you see all, all those old files. Okay, now we try as much as we could to actually convert those files and the, all the information in that file to a digital. So just by a click or by uh, typing a particular file number, it will clearly display all the information that is attached to that particular plot. For example, you can see a plot of land that is digitized into different layouts by your right here. Okay, with the yellow, with the yellow line. Okay, now these are different, different, these are different plots of land. Okay, these are different plots of land that is demarcated. So what is required now is that each of every applicant or every owners of this land has a file number. So what you need to do is to come to Kajis and tell them your file number. So you want to know information about your land, you just 
put it input into the system and it display all the information for you. If you want to purchase a property and then you want to know if the property is registered or if the property is it fall at the right locations where the government can give you an approval for construction, you make all those confirmation and make all the whole thing easy because you don't actually need to go and be looking for files up and down. What you need to do only is to actually go to your system and type, okay? And just search for a particular uh, uh, KGL, they call it Cardinal Land Number, okay? So you just search for uh, KGL and then it will just bring out all the information about that land. And then as well, we also serve as a consultant to uh, Kasuda, that is for Building Development Control. Kasuda is an agency in Kaduna State that control development. That is the development agency. And what we do there, this is actually my main interest as, as a builder or as, as a professional in construction industry. Uh, what we do is that now, uh, now we discover that uh, we design as an architect or as a designer that mostly we design without considering the coordinates. Now, what I mean by coordinates is that every every point on earth has a number. Every land on earth, every position on earth has a particular number. So now, as a construction professional or anybody using any of these Cartesian software or CAD software, you have to design with a reference. That is a coordinate reference. That is to say. If you are designing a house now, your starting point of where you are positioning that hand, that, that building supposed to be so, supposed to be due reference into your AutoCAD. What I mean by that, that is that if you are building in Lagos, a particular area in Lagos, and then a particular land, it is required that as an architect, you go to that place and pick a coordinate. Then when you are starting, for example, if you are using AutoCAD or any of those software, when you are starting, the software always tell you that you should specify your uh, first point, possibly AutoCAD. When you pick a line, you want to draw in AutoCAD, AutoCAD will tell you that you should specify first point. Normally, we will just click and then start without considering where are we doing this drawing. Possibly you are doing this drawing inside one ocean or inside one river or in one country like that, okay? But our interest is not that. So we, as far as our design is okay, we don't consider where that building is located as, as far as you print your drawing and uh, take it to the site and view. Now, but what we are trying to achieve in Kasuda now is that every building or every architect or a designer that is designing a building need to submit a coordinate of the location for those buildings, at least the four corner points. You understand? The four corner points of those buildings so that the agency now can actually uh, uh, load those uh, points in their system so that they will digitize it. For example, what you can see, the, next, the other picture where you can see, you see all the building that is being approved, that is digitized. So what you need to know for uh, 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 Kasuda now, if they want to know if this particular building is, uh, is this particular building is registered, what they need to know is just to zoom. They can possibly use a Google Health or a Google map to actually do that without necessarily going to the site or send their field staff to actually go to those places and check if this building is registered or what is going on in those kind of places. You understand this traditional way of doing things, okay? So now as a construction professional, if you are using GIS, it will make a whole lot of work easy for us, okay? So this is what we do for um, uh, Kasuda and then the Kaduna State Government. Okay, both in land tightening and then in building development control. Please, if you have any question, you can jot it down or put it down on the chat uh, box so that at the end of um, the, the sections, we can take one section to actually answer questions and take more questions, okay? Uh, we continue. Now, if you look at it, this is a 3D visualization of the uh, using the Google Earth. For example, one of the sample of what we actually use GIS in for building development control. You see a good visualization of this particular property or this particular area from your office, from the comfort of your own, uh, comfort of your office, you just sit down and just zoom to that location. Possibly if the architect give you the coordinates, you just type the coordinates and the Google Earth or Google Map will zoom you to that place immediately, okay? We are going to show you how you can use all these things at the course of this workshop, okay? Now, why do we need GIS as a construction professional? Why do you need to actually involve yourself with this uh, GIS? 
okay? Why are we making emphasis about the GIS? Now, one of the reasons is because as a GIS person, uh, uh, professional, or as a person that has a knowledge of GIS, you become uh, a location uh, intelligence, okay? You have what you call location intelligence. What it means there is that you don't actually need to stress yourself. You don't actually need to fear that, okay, how will I locate this place? All you need only is that, let them just give you the name of the place. Okay, you can go to Google Earth, Google Map and search, and possibly even pick the coordinate yourself. Okay, for example, there's a, there's a job that we did uh, in Lagos recently. I've not been to that place, but I do everything from the comfort of my, uh, from my office here without actually going to the place. What I require from them only is to just go to that place, just screenshot the coordinate of the place and just send to me. And I realize they sent the place for me. Uh, it's at uh, Victoria Island. I will just I just search for the place, impute the coordinate, and just take me to that property. And they have already screenshot the place for me, so I know the particular property I talk about. And I pick my measurements. I pick uh, the boundary of the of the of the of the land, and then do the the analysis, the grid that we're supposed to do. We are to do uh, grand penetrating radar. That is, there's going to be a construction there. Okay. There's going to be uh, a, a new construction, but there's an, exist there's an existing structure there already. So what, and the, it's going to be a heavy construction, actually. It's are going to build a, a kind of a, a, a gas plant there. So we are, the, the grand uh, penetrating reader and the GPR, uh, that is geophysics, uh, geotechnical survey. What it does now is that you, you, you run that technology, you run that machine, through that compound so that it can pick if there's any underground pipe, okay? If there's any underground pipe, so that in case of excavation, possibly you discover that maybe are during the design, they are to do a pipe, they are to do a pipe foundation or any kind of foundations. If the foundation is going deep down, then uh, so that it will not actually go and maybe break one, uh, possibly water pipe or uh fiber pipe or uh, cable fiber cable and all that you understand so that is one of the essence of those uh, uh, uh research or investigation so that you will not just blindly go and start digging you understand and then at the end you discover some things on the ground okay so that is what you know they, what you actually do for them is to actually produce the grids okay so i don't actually need to go to that site i can get a boundary from here in Kadna. From Lagos and then produce the grid for them. Okay, so this is one thing that GIS actually help us always help us to do. You don't actually need to travel from here to uh, Lagos just to pick a, a boundary of a particular plot. Okay, now another important thing is that CAD and CAD softwares have a coordinate system. Now we know that uh, we, as a construction professional, we mostly use CAD. Okay, we mostly use CAD either AutoCAD. Uh, Revit, uh, civil card, or any kind of survey card, you understand? There are many card software that we use. Now, it has a coordinate reference system. As I said from the beginning, those things have a coordinate reference system, but we don't actually put it to use, okay? We don't actually put it to use. So that's one of the reasons why we need to look at it. As I said, after, the, after these 40 minutes, we are going to take 10 minutes a break and come back. Now, there is a collaboration between Esri and Autodesk. Okay, Esri is the owner of GIS software. Autodesk is the owner of car software. Now, we talk about smart city. It will help us in achieving the smart city that we are looking for as construction industry. It will help us in construction of site plan and layout, which we are going to do at the course of this workshop. And it also help us in logistics management. Okay, it will help us in logistics management, proximity analysis. Now, what you mean by that is that if you are, if you are going to for a construction, if what you want to build a carry out a construction in a particular place, you can sit down in your comfort of your, in your home and know and try to bring out all the places that you can get your your material from, and then possibly come out with the route at which your driver or your truck will follow, so that it will bring out those uh, those um, those that you bring those material to your site okay so these are some of the these are the things that we we need to uh, that we need uh, GIS 
as a construction professional. Okay, 